Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, we will be continuing my series on the mineral nutrition of plants, and it'll be on part three, talking about organic and inorganic fertilizers. The mineral nutrition of plants, part three, organic and or chemical fertilizers. Organic and chemical fertilizers have been debated for more than a century. So what we're going to talk about today are, what are they? How do they work? What are the issues? And which one is better? An organic fertilizer is a fertilizer that is naturally produced and contains a plant mineral nutrient. The USDA in the USA lists organic principles and has established standards for organic grapes and wines, as well as other crops. The National Organics Standards Board, a committee of organic growers, handlers, retailers, environmentalists, scientists, USDA accredited certifying agents and consumer advocates make a list of the national and prohibited substances with the following principle. In organic crop production, non-synthetic or natural substances are allowed unless specifically prohibited and synthetic substances are prohibited unless specifically allowed. Many of these are from organic living sources such as manure, compost, and cover crop. Some products such as sewage are not allowed in the USA. Rock phosphate is an example of an organic fertilizer that is not from living things and does not have a carbon source. The Organic Materials Research Institute as a list of commercial materials and products considered organic. So organic is not necessarily the same definition as what organic chemists call organic. Organic by organic chemists is any molecule that has a carbon molecule in it. So how do organic fertilizers work? Organic fertilizers work as a slow release fertilizer that gradually decompose releasing their mineral nutrients for plant mineral nutrient uptake. That is a good thing. Microbial action in the soil can facilitate and speed up this process of decomposition and release of nutrients. Organic matter serves as a source of energy for these soil microbes, and the soil microbes produce complex carbohydrates that act as a cement which can bind the soil particles to help form soil aggregates. These soil aggregates improve the soil structure and the water permeability through the soil. Organic matter can also improve the water holding capacity of soils like sandy soils that cannot hold much water. What are the issues with organic fertilizers? Sometimes organic matter cannot supply enough nutrients when needed by the plants. Sometimes the source is inadequate. For example, if the carbon to nitrogen ratio is too high, the microbes will consume the nitrogen that is released for their own benefit. And the nitrogen will not be released for plant use or released very slowly. This carbon to nitrogen ratio is at approximately 30. So, Microbes use up about 30 carbons for every nitrogen molecule consumed. Some examples of high carbon to nitrogen ratio materials are straw, sawdust, peat moss, autumn tree leaves, etc. Items commonly found in your manure or bags at your local nursery or garden store. So it is a good practice to check and see what materials are in that manure. You can compensate for that by mixing in high nitrogen manures to help alleviate this problem, or alternatively, add some chemical nitrogen fertilizer. This will enrich that manure and will allow a, the release of the nitrogen to the plant. Another problem is that sometimes the temperature is too cold, like in the spring, for good microbial activity. Thus, they're very inactive and decomposition and their release of nutrients is too slow for the plant's needs. 
Sometimes fresh manure has too much of a good thing, like fresh urine, which can burn the plants. So usually manure is aged rather than used fresh. And this is perhaps the most important issue with organic fertilizers. There's an insufficient supply of organic matter in the world, even in the USA, to supply the mineral nutrient needs of our crop. My former soils professor, Alan Barker, estimated that it can only produce about 10% of the needs for an agricultural field. For example, a one acre field of corn, which requires high amounts of nitrogen, would require 22 tons of cow manure to supply it with sufficient nitrogen and maximize production. Fertilizers that are synthesized by some industrial chemical process is considered to be a chemical fertilizer. For example, rock phosphate is an organic fertilizer, as I mentioned before, because it is mined from natural mineral deposits rich in phosphorus. When rock phosphate is applied to the soil, the acid or the acidity of the soil slowly dissolves the phosphorus into solution, making it available to the plant. Superphosphate or triple superphosphate are chemical fertilizers made by treating the organic rock phosphate with sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid, speeding up this natural process. Thus, in the soil, you get much faster release of the phosphorus into the soil. However, that phosphorus gets quickly tied up in the soil by the soil chemistry. So it has limited availability and must be reapplied frequently. So how do chemical fertilizers work? Chemical fertilizers are made to be more concentrated in specific mineral nutrients and to be more soluble and readily available to the plant than natural organic fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers can be added directly to the soil, to the irrigation water, or sprayed on the leaves of the plant. Chemical fertilizers can be made also to be slow-release fertilizers to better mimic the actions of a natural fertilizer. What are the issues with chemical fertilizers? Because of their concentration, they can burn the plant if placed too close or in too much concentration. Fertilizers can also cause pollution and ecological disasters. Nitrogen is the main culprit here because nitrate is very mobile in the soil and easily moves into our waterways or it can be denitrified into the atmosphere contributing to greenhouse gases. Nitrogen in our waterways then supplies algae with one of their two growth limiting nutrients. The other is phosphorus, which is not mobile in the soil, as I mentioned before. It is supplied to the algae from the laundry detergent from our sewage system, and an algal bloom then ensues, starving the waterway of oxygen and killing many fish and other organisms. In some cases, fertilizers can cause soil degradation through changes in microbial populations, resulting in poor soil structure. So in summary, organic fertilizers are good and help build up soil structure and microbial populations, making for healthy soils. Chemical fertilizers are necessary if we are going to feed the world. Both have problems, but those problems can be avoided with careful use. A combination of both is often the best approach for a sustainable agriculture. And here I'm showing an image from Udvardi et al. on a research roadmap for responsible use of agricultural nitrogen. It shows the inputs being either fertilizer or manure or both, as well as nitrogen fixation. And it looks at the nitrogen use efficiency here in terms of the nitrogen outputs over the nitrogen inputs. And of course, the final nitrogen output is the harvested product. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel to see other videos like this one. Have a great day.